Today I'm going to be doing a thermal test on my water-cooled Raspberry Pi cluster to see if the water cooling system is effective with all of the Pi's overclocked and running at full load, and to see if there's any significant temperature difference between the first and last nodes, since they're all connected in series. The comment section on the build video was quite divided. Some suggested that the last Pi would start thermal throttling, some questioned having the radiator position first in the loop, and others said that it didn't make any difference in what order components are connected. There were quite a few mentions of a video by Jay's Two Cents on the loop order of PC components. The only way to really be sure is to test it out. The first thing we need is a means to get all the parts to run at full load and to produce as much heat as possible. For this I'm going to be using a utility called CPU Burn. Out of all of the CPU stress testing utilities I've used, this one seems to generate the most heat. So I'm going to install this on each part and then run the utility along with a printout of the clock frequency and temperature every 10 seconds. I'll then leave this running until it looks like the temperatures have leveled off and aren't increasing anymore, and we can then compare the temperatures logged by each and see if there was any significant difference between the first and the last nodes in the loop. One thing to remember is that the nodes are numbered differently to their position in the loop. The nodes are numbered from top to bottom left to right, and the cooling water runs from the bottom right to the bottom left. So the cooling loop order is actually 8765-1234. If the loop order does matter, then we should have node 8 being the coolest and node 4 being the hottest at the end of the test. I'll open up a new terminal window for each PI and prepare the command line on each so that we can just hit enter in each window to start the test. You can see each PI started off with a CPU temperature of around 30 to 31 degrees and this sparked quite quickly to 40 degrees once the test started running. We'll now leave the test running and wait for them to stop increasing. We're now at 8 minutes and you can see that the cluster is quite a bit warmer than when we first started the test. It looks like we're starting to get more consistent temperature readings so it'll probably level off soon. Okay, so the test has been running for about 10 minutes now, and it doesn't look like there's been much increase in temperature over the past 2 minutes. So let's put the results onto a graph and have a look at what the temperature of each pi is. I've renamed each node to the order that it sits in the loop to make it easier to follow. At first glance it doesn't look like there's a clear increase from one end of the loop to the other, but there's more of a significant difference between the individual pi's than I expected. It looks like the pi in loop position 4, which is node 5, ran the coolest, and the pi in loop position 1, which is node 8, ran the warmest. To get a better idea of the order of the nodes, this is what the results look like if we average out the last 4 minutes of the test. So there really doesn't seem to be any correlation between the pi's position in the loop and its temperature. You can see here that the order in the loop and the average temperature of the node is pretty much random. If the loop order was significant, then we would have seen a descending order pattern starting with 7 or 8 and ending with 1 or 2. The 4 degree temperature variation between them is more likely caused by conductivity differences between the cooling blocks and CPUs, manufacturing differences in the cooling blocks and PIs, and the CPUs might generate slightly different amounts of heat. There were also a couple of comments which suggested that PIs were so underpowered that they don't need any active cooling and that a simple heatsink on each would do. So next I'm going to try turning off the pump and leaving the CPU burn utility running to see if we even need water flow through the heatsinks. Each cooling block is effectively a 30 by 30 by 10 heatsink, so they do increase the surface area of the CPU and should help with cooling by themselves. So it's pretty obvious that the cooling blocks are heating up quite quickly without water being circulated through them. You can see from the thermal image that the circuit is much hotter than it was with water flowing through it. I turned the loop back on when the hottest pi reached 65 degrees, and this was only a little over 5 minutes in. The individual pies look pretty cool under the thermal camera now. The emissivity difference between the acrylic and the cooling blocks makes the pie logo show up. Here are the results for the test with the loop off. It looks like the temperature would have leveled off somewhere around 72 degrees. So you could probably get away with running the pies without cooling water on, without them thermal throttling but it's getting close, and they probably wouldn't last very long if they're frequently running over 70 degrees. 
So it looks like loop order has very little effect on the temperature of each component. And while this might seem like it doesn't make sense, it's actually got to do with the flow rate. If the loop was running at a really low flow rate, say taking 8 minutes for a milliliter of water to get from one end to the other, then the water would have almost a minute in each node to heat up. This would obviously have an additive effect, where each power would increase the temperature of the water by a couple of degrees, and you'd land up with a pretty significant difference in temperature between the first and the last nodes. But in this case, and as with pretty much all PC water cooling loops, the flow rate through the loop is quite high. Water circulates from the first to the last node in this loop in under 10 seconds, so there's very little time for the water to be heated up by each node. This doesn't mean that the water isn't heated up, it just means that the difference between the first and last nodes is much smaller, so it's pretty much negligible. This basically means that the temperature of the whole loop remains fairly uniform, and that the order of the components within the loop doesn't really matter. As long as you've got a radiator which is removing more heat than all of the nodes are putting into the loop, then the loop will work effectively. Running a loop in this way is actually more efficient as well, because the greater difference in temperature between the cooling block and the liquid running through it, the more effective it is at removing heat. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.